Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah, and we are delighted to have you with us. So thrilled and so honored. And I know as you're watching today that many of you have needs in your life. There's financial needs. Many of you watching, you have health struggles, family issues. Maybe you're watching today and you're just struggling with depression. But whatever the need is in your life, we want to pray for you. So hop on the phone or get on our website. We like to pray for you. And even more than liking to pray for you, we know that God answers prayer and God has answers. God has provisions. God has healing. God has transformation, redemption, reconciliation. God has, I love this, God has more solutions then you have problems. So let, let us have the privilege and honor of getting to pray for you today. And mom, I'm so excited. We have one so of our I. favorite people. Favorite. Yay! Favorite. <laughs> favorite. Thank you, thank you, thank Thanks you. Thanks for having You're me. You're the best. We're so oh, thrilled. We love you. Thrilled love to you. have you with us. Love you so much. Now, not everybody in our audience knows who you are. So can you give us just a little quick thumbnail, kind of some of your background, and then we'll jump into, I love this book. Oh my goodness. Anything with insecurity? Phew. We're well, going to hit this really well. I'm 100 years old. <laughs> I'm just turning this year. I'm, I'm now qualifying for Medicare. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I call myself the accidental author. I've written 16 books, and oh. I didn't start out to write a book. I'm a CPA by training, and I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world, and I love Jesus, and I love my job of speaking on behalf of God. That's nice. my job. Nice, I love it. nice, nice. Now, I love this book. It's called 30 Days to a Stronger, More Confident You. Yes. Man. Who doesn't need confidence? Everybody. Right. Everybody. And you know, they tell you not to write, that whatever you write is not for everybody. But let me tell you, everybody needs more help in this area of feeling adequate for the task. Right. And sometimes we're insecure and we let it come out in different ways. Absolutely. What are some of the ways that we are insecure? We express that. Well, you know, first of all, we got to get people to the point where they acknowledge that they are insecure. And I want to define what insecurity means. It means to be not sure. And I'm sure there's somebody out there who's not sure. I'm so sure that you're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but confidence means with faith. That's what con means with. Fit means faith. So to be to be confident is, means to act with faith or trust. So I just I want to start that as a foundation. Why do we need it? Because there are so many people who don't even set out to pursue their destiny because they look at uh, what they bring to the table and maybe it seems inadequate for the task. So I say, listen. First of all, settle the fact that you are inadequate. Once I determine that, I am inadequate. Now, but I am adequate through Jesus for everything. So apart from Him, I can do nothing. But with Him. Mm. I can do anything. Everything. Everything. And you know, you're watching this and you may say, man, I've got some areas of my life that I'm really troubled with. I feel so weak. I feel like I'm a failure in. And you know, I've been there, done that. But call us for prayer because we'd really like to pray with you. We don't counsel you. But I'm telling you, people have prayed me through a lot of things to see how big Jesus is in my life and in yours. Um, you know, something interesting, on page 11, you have a quiz in here that relates to insecurity. And it's super helpful. Do you find yourself resenting or criticizing others who are assertive, confident, or capable? Do you brag about your possessions, accomplishments? I mean, these are super, like, nail you to the wall questions. Absolutely, and they're biblically based. Because one of the, the first question, do you find yourself uh, resenting somebody who's, who is confident? Remember the story of Elihu, when David came down to the battlefield and saw everybody running from Goliath, and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should, you know, defy the armies of the living God? Elihu got really upset with him because David reminded him of his inadequacy. His name meant God is my father. And here he is running from the giant like everybody else. But David comes on the scene and he says, this man is uncircumcised. I believe in the covenant. Whoever is against us is against God. Hey, we got this. This is a slam dunk. I'll do it. I don't have to have the experience. I don't have to have killed 99 giants. That's not where I'm getting my confidence from. I'm getting it from the covenant. He's uncircumcised. And that's really true. And Elihu was David's oldest brother. Oldest brother. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think he's going to be all of that in a bag of chips, yep. right? Because yep. I'm the big brother. Right. And the little brother comes along and kind of like... Full of confidence, but not self-confidence. No, and it rips off the mask. Yes, it does. Rips off the mask of Elihu. And it infuriates him. That's why a lot of times you see people who are confident and other people will resent them. They'll call it cocky, but that's not cocky when you are confident in what God has said about what you can do. Right. That's why I like the woman in Proverbs 31. It describes her. It says, she perceiveth that her merchandise is good. 
I love that. She knows within herself that what she brings to the table is good. That's not cocky. That's not self-confidence. She just knows what God has put in her. And it's, a lot of people just don't know. Yeah, it's confidence in God, yes, really. Yes. And Christ in you, the hope of glory, because the Bible, and you bring this out very clearly, indicates you can do all things through Christ. Through Christ. Not without <laughs> Him. Right. And so you need to get the book and get the confidence that is biblically based. It's not self-help, it's God help. And we all need Him so much. So you say, well, that would be a good book for me to get into. Yes, but also it'd be a good book for you to pass on. You know, we give people a lot of things that I don't think we help them that much, especially sweets, you just make them fat. But give them God's Word and let the Word of God work in you and put you into a confident place. And maybe you have a friend or a loved one who's just always down, always lacking confidence. Folks, don't criticize them. Give them the Word. Call us right now. Get the book or books. You think it's good to get more sure, than one? Of course, of course, of course. And it's super helpful. But I want to ask you too, what are some of the experiences in your life that, that caused you to write this? Well, I grew up in the South. And I don't have to tell you, I'm a, I'm a black woman. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I grew up in the South. And, and, and then it was in, during the 60s. And it was, a, it was kind of a trying time. And so you, if, I always felt like, OK, let's see, I have strikes against me. But I, I, honestly, that's what people said. But I never felt that. I always knew that no man can thwart God's purpose for my life, according to Isaiah 14, 27. I tell you, I have to just stop and say this. The Word of God is so foundational to who I am sure. until if you believe that, and you, you got to settle that. Nobody, nobody, racism couldn't thwart God's plan for my life. No man can thwart God's purpose for your life. Right. So that's where I developed my confidence. And it's been like a, a, a magnet. People want to be around people who are confident. They say, you seem so confident. Well, that's because I work hard not to have self-confidence. I sure. really do. I would just work very hard not to say I can do something on my own. That's just, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say that. Right. I'm afraid to say I can do something on my own. But I'm so glad to, to be able to teach that, to model it, and to tell people, listen, you can do it, and you can do it. Yes. And God doesn't look at your race. No. He doesn't look at your color. He doesn't really look at all your degrees. He doesn't. He looks at who He is in you. Absolutely. Hey, you need to call us. Maybe you have children that really just feel inferior, and you need to give us their names. We'd like to pray over them. And you may want to include your own, or maybe you know some people, you have some relatives, or some loved ones, some friends, some neighbors who really need prayer. Call us. And we don't counsel, but oh, we know God moves and works. I have a question. You know, people will always say to you, and, and what I hear you saying is, you know, well, black woman, woman, you know, early 60s and all that. And they'll say, and they'll put that, they'll try to put, so to speak, that stuff on you, right? Yeah. So what do you do with that? What, what I refute it. You don't have to, listen, first of all, I, re, I refute it. If it comes into my own life, my own thoughts, I cast down those imaginations. You go for a position and they say, well, you know, they never had a, a black person to do this or a woman to do that or, right. or an older person. I'm in that older person range now. They've never had a person over 50, whatever, to do that. I'm thinking, listen, I, God is not subject to circumstances and facts and realities in anybody's life. I don't care what anybody has said about what you can and cannot do. Your destiny rests in God. It really does. And so I just, I just, I cast that aside. I don't, I don't embrace that as my truth. My truth is what the Word says. So somebody says something like stupid to you and, uh, you know, you want to rip their head off, right? <laughs> I mean, you're like, how no. dare you say, I mean, I, that's what I, that's what goes through my mind. I'm like, idiot. And my, my, <laughs> my conversation in my head is jerky. You know, I'm rip you. And then, you know, you smile and like, so what do you say to no, that it's, person? It's a teaching moment. It's a teaching moment. I say, oh, but I'm special. I'm surrounded with favor like a shield. Girl, that's great, I though. I like to say, oh, no, I'm, I'm the exception to that. You see, that's the beauty of being a Christian. I'm an exception to all the world's rules and their standards and their limitations and their boundaries, and so are you. You don't have to bring God down to the level of your circumstances or the realities that surround you. You begin to decrease something different. I am surrounded with favor like a shield, according to Psalms 512. I say that. And that builds confidence in other people. Right. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. And so you take us through this book, yes. showing us that our confidence is in God. So when I look at some of these things, they're so interesting about lack of confidence is also about 
that we want to please people. Oh, we want to please people. And then I look here also, the envy, but just presenting preeminence. Yes. You know, and oh, yes. acting like you're more than you are to try and cover up for what you're not. And that's what makes that's us good. not be a good team player. I, I, the right. story I tell is, uh, is in 3 John 9, where John says, I wrote to the church, but the atrophist who loves to have the preeminence, he wouldn't receive us. He was afraid that if we were to come into the environment, then we would have more favor with the people than he would. That is so silly. Now, that's what gets me going. I keep thinking, idiot, do you know the Bible? <laughs> I don't like it when a Christian says that. Sure. Nobody can thwart God's plan for you. If God has said you're going to be exalted in this area, no man can stop it. And see, you may say, mm, I know people like that. I don't want to cover that I'm like that. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't know you're like that. But when you get a book like this, it reveals the Word of God and who Jesus is in you. And there are many chapters in here that will help you to be confident in Him. So if you haven't called in yet, call in. Get the book or books. Sarah always says, get them for your Bible study. Get them for a whole group of people. Because folks, if we really want to help people, if we really want to see them changed, it has to be Jesus. It has to be the Word. Because self-help hasn't helped self much. But God's help. I'm telling you, it will put you over in every arena of your life. And where you feel inadequate, honey, He doesn't. And it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So this is your opportunity to be a blessing, not only to yourself, but to others. And we're going to be right back because Deborah brings the best on confidence in Jesus. She even tells you how to have a purposeful life. So you don't want to miss this next segment. No, you don't want to miss. Don't turn it off. Stay right there. Call in fast. And of course, you know we love, 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 love for you to call in for prayer. Is insecurity robbing you from living life to the fullest? Do you want to live a bold and fearless life? For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you 30 days to a stronger, more confident you by best-selling author Deborah Pigay. Through biblical principles, personal challenges, healing prayers, and confidence-affirming scriptures, you will discover the path to a more confident you. Along with this life-changing book, we want to send you Marilyn's God is For You 3-CD teaching set. The Word states that if God is for us, who can be against us? You will be encouraged to daily seek the Lord, spend time in His Word, and pray powerfully and effectively. We will also send you the lovely God is For You keychain to remind you to keep your eyes focused on our Heavenly Father who is always for us. You can confront and overcome the fears that limit you. Call or click today to get this exciting transformational resource. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Nightcare, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Nightcare from Saving Moses. We are so happy to have our special guest with us today, Deborah Pagay. And I know we've been talking, Deborah. I love your book, 30 Days to Stronger, More Confident You. Yes. Such a rich, rich book. Of course, you need to hop on the phone, get on the website, grab three, grab five, grab ten. This is great for a book club, a Bible study, Sunday school. This is a fat pitch. I'm serious. You need to get this. But, you know, you and I were talking just here at the break, and we were talking about some inadequacies, right? Yes. And uh, there was one of the questions I thought was really powerful. How did some of these inadequacies, inadequacies impact your life before you started to really live in this reality? Well, I finally had to come to the grips with the fact that I was trying to appear to be adequate by the things that I surrounded myself with. 
because that happens. I, I, I felt I needed status symbols because if all your life you're told you're inadequate because you are this or not that, right. then all of a sudden, you, well, what do people esteem? Well, I'm going to make sure I'm surrounded with things that other people esteem. You need um, a, a status car and, and designer clothes and, and those kinds of things and important friends that you can name drop about. Sure. <laughs> so listen, and, and I had a car that I, and I won't name the brand, but I just had to have that car because it was a symbol of uh, achievement. And my husband's and, and the car stayed in the shop. And my husband said, "One day you're gonna look up. And all you're gonna have for your whole life's work is a bunch of uh, car repair bills." So I said, "You know what? This car is part of, of who I am." I mean, how silly is that for a thing to be how you define yourself? And so it was manifesting itself that way. And so I was finally so glad that I got delivered from that. I finally got truthful in the inward parts, as, as David says in Psalms right. 51. God, you yeah. desire truth in the inward parts. So you can keep lying to yourself about your motives for wanting things, but I always ask myself, even today, when I buy something, if the whole world were blind, would you buy it? Because that lets me know that I may be buying it for somebody else. And I think that happens with teenagers a lot. You know, <laughs> they want brand clothes. They oh, want these certain kind of shoes. Ooh. Why? Because they feel that makes them accepted. Yes. And maybe you have teenagers or you're a grandparent to teenagers or some people like this who are trying to buy things to have status. And that's very important that they see the truth. And prayer will bring people to the truth. I know that. I know that for myself. So please call us. Give us the names of those people for prayer. We're not going to go on anything long, but prayer can change people. It changed you, changed me, will change them. You know, another question that I have, um, sometimes we get insecure, you know, from our background. Yes. You know, we're told you're a loser, blah, 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 all these things. But sometimes we get insecure as well, or we lack confidence when there's transition or changes in our life, right? So yes. big changes. I remember when I got married, that was like a brave new world, you know? Did you struggle in any of the, in some of those transition seasons? Well, in 2006, I decided to go on my own as a full-time writer and speaker. But I was an established CPA and I thought, well, you know, I could just keep doing this and charge so much per hour and then I know I would have a, a solid life. But God was calling me out of that to write and to add value to people's lives in another way. I felt very insecure about that. I'm used to a paycheck, right. <laughs> but I decided to, follow God in his word because he provides he provides where he guides and that's not a trite saying but he really does he yeah. really does and so when I left my job eight months out I had made more than I had made on the job that was God no way yeah I had and I kept thinking writing books people don't read enough for that <laughs> oh my goodness. but you know what I love about Deborah hmm. is she wanted to help people sure her motive was to help people mm -hmm. and that's why I love your book What's it for? 30 days to a stronger, more confident you. It's to help you. It's not written for everybody else. It's written for you. And so it's not a self-help book. It's a God-help book. And you're going to see some things in your life that you will identify that you're trying to kind of show off. Or like the scripture says, you know, comparing ourselves with ourselves. You're not wise. You're comparing yourself to somebody else instead of who Jesus really made you to be. You need to call in and get the book, get several for others. Sarah, I love this program. I love what God is doing. I totally agree. Marilyn encouraged people to call in. I can't begin to tell you how important that is that you get prayer for your insecurities. In Psalms 34, 4, David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all mm -hmm. my fears, all of them. That's all insecurity is, it's just fear. I'm not sure, so I, I'm feeling inadequate, not sure, that's what insecure means, not sure. God can deliver you from all your fears. Now he may not do it all at once, but if, whatever it is, so if you feel inadequate, even about some aspect of your body that you don't like, maybe your nose is too big, or you think, or whatever, but you can just begin to accept that as God's mark of, a, of, of, of something significant about you. That's it can really be done. good. You know, another thing that, that I think people struggle with is this whole sense of being perfect, perfectionism. And uh, that's a real, that cuts your legs out too. Do you talk about that in here? I do talk about perfectionism because it, when, we're, when we um, really pursue, everything has to be just like, just so, because we're trying to be blameless so nobody can criticize us. And so I'm, I, it's got to be just the way I say it, just the way I want it. You know, it's, it makes, it's horrible for teamwork. Nobody wants to be around a perfectionist. You got to be flexible. But when you find a person who has to have it, have it just the way he wants it, you got to step back and look at yourself and say, why? 
Who am I trying to impress? What am I afraid will happen if it's not perfect? Mm -hmm. And probably because past experiences says if you're not perfect, you're going to get criticized. Yes. And if you do get criticism, it can be very helpful to you. Oh, it's it not be. all a downer. Yeah, yeah. It's it a can tool be for growth. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. And maybe you today feel like you've been put down by people and put down by people. And maybe you feel like your children have been, your grandchildren, your business, work situation. Why don't you call us for prayer? We're not going to counsel you. But folks, there's only one you. And you were made so special. You have an identity with him that nobody else has. You have a fingerprint. And he has made you for something very special. Call us now. You know, I have another question because I always have these like random. Woo yes, you do. You just kind of <laughs> brace yourself. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So, Deborah, I know a lot of people have read this book. What some of the, what are some of the comments of people who have read this book, and what has it done in their lives? Well, based on the emails that I've gotten, one woman said, "I always hated my feet." <laughs> she said, "I never wore sandals." She said, "But after I read that book and understood that uh, I was formed in the womb to be His servant, I, I always tell people, repeat that Isaiah 49, 5." He formed me in the womb. He deliberately shaped every right. feature. He said, I have made you unique, unique, unique. She says, and now I, I celebrate my difference. That, that's rewarding for me to hear somebody say that. I can celebrate my difference. I can celebrate now that I'm five, two and a half and I have this pigmentation. I can celebrate that because he formed me in the womb to be his servant. So whatever this path was that he wanted for me, he needed me to look like this, to be this person. Sure. I'm excited about that. I'm unique. Sure, and I think too as well, I'll bet you, and I just kind of thinking through this, marriages, I'll bet you this has helped marriages to no end. Well, well it can because if you are always being jealous, which is the fear of being displaced, and there are a lot of jealous spouses, then you read this book and you read the scriptures that talk about, I think it's Psalm 16, he guards all that is mine. You get that truth in your heart. You don't have to guard your mate. I'm afraid somebody's going to take him because he guards all that is mine. I love that. Not only that, sometimes in our marriages we cut, we cut the other down, right? Because we're trying to make ourselves feel important. And sometimes that disrespect thing comes through and all kinds of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, stuff that comes out. And other people will put that on your spouse. For instance, I'm in the public eye and my husband isn't. But, you know, and I, have, I know other speakers and, you know, so people will assume if a man is married to a strong woman that the man is weak. You see, that tells me a lot about their mindset. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, comparing themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh. a lot of husbands can't take that, but it was my husband's idea for me to leave my job and to do this full time. Wow. You know, what can you wow. say? So really if, if husbands and wives would understand, we are a team, we are one. Whatever happens for you happens for us. Right. We're in this together. Right. And, and quit all that madness about, well, they're going to think I'm weak or whatever. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That's so rich. And, you know, in this whole book, there's all kinds of practical resisting temptation, personal devaluation, pride, envy, uh, running toward the giant. So much good, good, rich stuff. So please hop on the phone, get on the website. You want to grab several of these because here's the situation. You and I, we like, I don't know about you, but I love to read. And I'm always looking to give books away to my friends. Hey, I got this. And I recommend, I can't even tell you how many times. I was driving into work today thinking, oh, I need to send this book to this one. Da, da, da. And books are so helpful because we read it and it changes our thinking, changes the way we see stuff. And it changes our behavior, our attitudes, everything. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab at least three or five of these. There'll be tremendous help for you, for the people you give it to. Plus the fact we love, 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 love to pray for you. So any need that you have in your life, whether you have a need in your marriage, you're watching right now, maybe you're struggling with insecurity or inadequacy and you're dealing with some of the diva mindset and all that stuff. Whatever it is, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you and see God do absolutely amazing things. Is insecurity robbing you from living life to the fullest? Do you want to live a bold and fearless life? For your gift of $30 or more, we will send you 30 Days to a Stronger, More Confident You by best-selling author Deborah Pigay. Through biblical principles, personal challenges, healing prayers, and confidence-affirming scriptures, you will discover the path to a more confident you. Along with this life-changing book, we want to send you Marilyn's God is For You 3-CD teaching set. The Word states that if God is for us, who can be against us? You will be encouraged to daily seek the Lord, spend time in His Word, and pray powerfully and effectively. 
We will also send you the lovely God is for you keychain to remind you to keep your eyes focused on our Heavenly Father who is always for us. You can confront and overcome the fears that limit you. Call or click today to get this exciting transformational resource. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, has an extremely prominent sex industry. Sex workers have few options for their babies while they work at night. Most babies are left alone in dangerous and devastating conditions. Night care, the first of its kind, is a safe haven for these babies. Here is where babies are happy, protected, fed, and cared for nightly. Will you help the least of these? Night Care from Saving Moses. We love having Deborah Pagay with us. I'm telling you, it's such a fun, fun, fun time with you. But for our audience, I really want you to take just a little minute here and pray for our audience because the truth of it is every single person, me too, so I'm throwing myself in this audience, pray for us that we would have more God confidence, not self-confidence. Let's you call it supreme confidence, but God confidence. Absolutely. Let's go before the throne. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are God. We thank you for your word that it's alive and well. We thank you for being omnipotent, all powerful. We thank you that nothing is too hard for you. We love you and adore you. We just forgive us, God, for trying to walk in our own strength. And we bow from this day forward. We will walk in supreme confidence. We know, God, that your word is real and alive. And we thank you, God, for the privilege of just coming into your presence, God. And we lay everything at your feet. Teach us how to rest in your word. We thank you. We love you. What a privilege it is, God, to walk according to your will, your will and your way. So teach us, God. Give us a passion for your word and a passion for prayer that we know that we can rest in you and we thank you, God. And we stand in faith on your omnipotence, your omniscience, and your omnipresence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And you know what? We'd love to hear from you and just encourage you to stand on the word, but pray with you in a personal way, with a personal need. And of course, you know, before you hang up, be sure you order the book because the book is going to bless you. You can get more than one, pass it on to others. But that special prayer, you know, a personal prayer just for you, that is awesome. And we really believe that today is the best day of your life because of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.